Welcome to the Fusion Breakout titled Being Your Kids Leaders Dream Team Member. Now, first off, I just wanna take an opportunity to thank you, you amazing volunteers, whether you're in the preschool room or the elementary room, whether you're changing diapers or whether you're leading a small group, I hope that you hear it, and if not, then hear it from me, that we could not accomplish what we would like to do for the kingdom of God if it wasn't for you amazing volunteers. My goal through this breakout is to hopefully encourage you and equip you to be, just like the title says, your Kids Leaders Dream Team member. So first I'm gonna go through some very basic things, some things that you probably already know and you probably heard many, many times, but I just wanna make sure and reiterate them to you. So we're gonna start with some basics and then by the end I'm gonna give you three big tips that I believe will really encourage you and equip you to be the best team member that you can be for your children's pastor or kids uh, leader. So let's jump right in. Uh, obviously the goal is to raise children with an authentic and a big faith. So that by the time that they're a tween, a teenager, or even a young adult, when they have life's challenges coming at them, they have a foundation that they can live their life by. And so I just wanna encourage you that what we, are what we are doing is eternal stuff. Before we get too deep, let's start with the basics, but before I start with that list, let me read this to you. Colossians 3.23 reads, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So remember, everything that I'm gonna talk about, try to keep that in your mindset, that everything we do, God has called us to do it to the best of our abilities. And so, let's jump right in to our basics. Number one, show up, be dependable. And I know it's, it's so easy sometimes when life gets busy for something to come up and for things to just fall by the wayside. But as an amazing volunteer that you are, that dream team member that we desire for you to be, I want to encourage you to be dependable. Show up when you say you're going to show up. Number two, be on time. Obviously, be punctual. If the agreement is for you to show up 15 or 20 minutes before the gathering or your service starts, then be there 15 to 20 minutes, maybe even a half an hour early and show a little extra incentive. I want to encourage you because all of this, remember, is through the lens of everything we do, we should do to the best of our abilities. Not only should we physically show up, but we got to be there on time. Number three, be prepared. And this is all about just being reliable. I really encourage you to have an idea of what the class is gonna be about, what the lesson is gonna be teaching that week, and even have a personal story or a personal scripture that maybe is not a part of the curriculum to help feed into what you are gonna be teaching those kids that week. I promise you, if you come in dependable and reliable and really well prepared, your leader is gonna notice that and they are gonna really look at you as that dream team member. So be prepared. Be that reliable volunteer. And the fourth one I would say is over communicate. Now communicating is a vast and a broad, broad topic. But as far as what I'm talking about is communicate, communicate to your leader the way you want to be communicated to. So if you want to be communicated through text or email or personal message, then communicate to them that way. But also on the other side, you have to be willing to give when they're asking. If they have a specific system, maybe planning center, and they schedule you, make sure that you respond to those email notifications. It's one thing to let them know through text you're not gonna be there, but if their system is to rely on planning center, I wanna encourage you to be that above everybody else dream team member is to make sure that you over communicate. I can't say enough about how well uh, my volunteers have appreciated me really setting the standard for this is the system we use and for us all to be on the same page, we really all need to use the same system. So I wanna encourage you again to over communicate, let them know what is working for you, what is not, and definitely respond when you are being scheduled. So there you go. There's your basics. So let's dive in a little bit deeper. I wanna give you three main things that I truly believe will equip and empower you to be that dream team member. Number one, 
have an expectation to be equipped for success. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean simply this. If you look at Ephesians 4, 11, and 12, it says that as a pastor and a minister, that my job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Well, that includes you. My job is to equip you to succeed in the ministry. You have all the right, biblically saying, that you deserve to be equipped properly and equipped well to succeed at what you're being asked to volunteer to do. So I wanna encourage you, number one, don't be afraid to ask for what you need to succeed. Whether it be extra small group items or uh, crafts, whether it be extra markers or crayons, whether it be the lesson plan for the next week in advance. Maybe you want the entire month well in advance. As a leader, I want you to know that it is so, so encouraging when my volunteers want to go above and beyond to be well prepared and they ask me to step up my game to equip them for the works of the ministry because that is truly my job. So if your leader already goes above and beyond to equip you for success, maybe you've asked them and, and, and now they are uh, preparing you to win, don't forget to thank them. Go out of your way to simply give them a verbal affirmation that can go a long way in helping them continue to know that they're doing what they need to to equip you to succeed in ministry, okay? Big number two, know the vision. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you know the vision statement of your church? Do you know if your children's ministry has its own vision statement? If so, do you know what it is? And if not, should your children's ministry have one? I want to ask you those questions because it's important for you to know. Why? And that's exactly what I want to say. It is the why. The vision is the why an organization does what they do. And so I want you to know that it is important to be the next level volunteer, that dream team member. It is important for you to understand the why your church or your ministry does what it does. Now, why is that important? Because volunteering is not easy. I'm sure I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here, but I want you to know that the vision is to help equip you and to remind you when times are tough, when Billy says a bad word in small group and you have to explain to parents what the situation is and you feel like you're just a failure, that vision is what you're supposed to come back to. And remember, this is the eternal stuff we're working for. And so I encourage you, encourage you, encourage you to know the vision. And if you don't, then the simple task is to go and ask. Ask your leader, what is the vision of our church? And then here's the other part about it. When your leader gives you that information, take a look at what they do. I'm sure you will see the reasons that they choose to focus on A, instead of how maybe you think they might be needing to focus on B, a lot of the times will be because the vision focuses them in their giftings to lead in a very specific, specific way. And so, very key, I wanna encourage you amazing volunteers to know the vision, know the why behind your organization or your ministry, all right? Number three, get to know your leader. Now, this might seem very cliche and very easy, but let me ask you, do you actually know your leader? Do you know their personality? Do you know their favorite food and their favorite dessert? Do you know what they like to do in their free time? Now, some of those things may not be very important, but the more you know about your leader, the better equipped you are gonna be to serve alongside them. You will maybe start to learn some things about their personality and why they respond to uh, trials and tribulations or, or stresses and frustrations the way that they do because that's their personality. The more you know about them, the greater impact I truly believe you can have as a team. So here's two quick things that you can do to get to know your leader a little more, okay? Number one, know their love language. Now, if you already know what love languages are, you probably know where this conversation is going. But if you don't know what love languages are, then stick with me, okay? Basically, love language is 
how our hearts receive love. All of us are wired to receive and retain a level of love within us, and we are all needing love, especially your children's ministry leader. 1 Corinthians 13, the all popular, this is what love is scripture. But if you look at verse 13 of 1 Corinthians 13, it says, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. Again, we all want love, and especially your children's ministry leader. They need love too. So let's jump right into the five basic love languages. There is physical touch, there is uh, words of affirmation, there is gifts, there is quality time and acts of service. Now, I do have to give you a little bit of caution. Obviously, some of those uh, love languages are not very appropriate for a volunteer to express towards their leader. But what I want you to know is that every person has multiple love languages. We all just have one primary language. So if your leader tends to have a physical touch love language, then what is their secondary or their third? And speak to them or react to them in that way. An easy way for you to figure out uh, their love language is Google free love language test. You can go online and you can find an easy love language test that will help them figure out their own or for you to figure out your own. And I encourage you to know how you receive love best. Now you might think you already know that about yourself, but I myself was actually surprised at my results. I would also like to caution, if your leader is of the opposite sex, please do know that there has to be boundaries between you and your leader. Let their spouse be the primary person that speaks their love language. You are simply, and what I'm encouraging is that you are a supplement in ministry to love them, to build them up, because like I said, we all desire love. And God told us the most important thing that we're supposed to do is to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But just as much and as important as that first, he said to love your neighbor as yourself to love others. So we have to know how to express love to our leaders. And that can have a profound impact on your ability to succeed and be that dream team member, okay? Number two goes right along with number one, and it's actually called knowing your leader's apology language. All of us, we make mistakes. I myself am a huge mistake maker, and I need to know how best to apologize and seek forgiveness. And each of us desire a way for people to call themselves out on their mistakes in different ways. And so I wanna encourage you simply, same thing, you can Google free apology language test. And if you do that, you can take the test and figure out how it is you respond best when people apologize to you because I can guarantee you you're going to make a mistake. I can guarantee you your leader is also going to make mistakes. And the ability for you to understand each other on how you speak to them in love and how you can apologize to them, my goodness, I guarantee you, you will be able to succeed even better in ministry than you could have even dreamed of. And so I just want to continue to encourage you to get to know your leader more. Lastly, on this topic, I would like to say the tests for yourself are so important, not just within ministry, but for you to know who you are as a person and you know for your family to understand how they can love you and how you can seek a, a, a forgiveness for your mistakes when you are outside of the, the walls of ministry. So let's do a quick recap. The basics. Be dependable. Show up when you say you're going to show up. Number two, be punctual. Be on time. Show up when you're supposed to be there and even show up early. Number three, be reliable. By showing up prepared every week and just ready to serve and dive in. Number four, be teachable. Be communicating every way you can to better equip each other, uh, not just leader to volunteer, but volunteer towards leader on how you guys can equip each other to succeed. Then my three big ones. Number one, have an expectation to be equipped for success. Number two, know the vision. And number three, get to know your leader. If you do these things in even just some part, I guarantee you, you will have a profound impact even greater than you dreamed and you will be looked at 
and be marveled at by your leader as a dream team member. Now, one last thing I would love to offer to you is an amazing resource. If you are a small group leader, I highly recommend uh, Reggie Joyner's book, Lead Small. Now, he is a uh, leader in the Orange curriculum, and here's what's so awesome about this book is that you do not have to purchase or own or even operate within the Orange curriculum, but this is an amazing resource for small group leaders that just want to have a bigger impact in speaking life, love, and encouragement into children. And so it just breaks down uh, five ideas every small group leader needs to know. Be present, create a safe place, partner with parents, make it personal and move them out. And so I highly recommend this amazing resource. You can find it online. Uh, and you can look up uh, the Orange store um, to find Lead Small. Other than that, my prayer for you is that you got something out of this teaching and that I hope that you know that you are highly valued and you are highly sought after, not just, just to be a warm body in a classroom, but to truly make a profound impact in the lives and the trajectory of kids for the rest of generations to come. Be that dream team member for your kid's ministry leader. I love you, and I hope that you have an amazing time here at Fusion. Take care, and God bless.